Today, we're going to build this. You'll learn how to build a GDPR compliant cookie consent system in Webflow. It's completely integrated with Webflow Designer and we have full native styling and layout control for our components. This video is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build this cookie consent component. Let's do it. That's effing sweet. Let's click on apps and open the FinSuite components app. Click on cookie consent. We'll configure our settings on the left and we'll see our component on the right. Let's start with the simple setup. This setup is called simple for a reason. It will take us less than one minute to build. So let's select simple and get started. Expires is the amount of days until we show the user another banner. If we leave this blank, the default is 120 days. Here you can pick from the standard animation options and let's choose slide up. As we edit all animation options here on the left, we'll see the component animate on the right. And let's choose easing and set that duration to 500. Reset interactions is only needed if you add Webflow interactions to your components. I'll keep global banner on, and this allows us to only have one consent component on the home page of the project. This one cookie consent component will then be loaded on every page of the project on the published site. Let's select the body or a div block in Webflow Designer, then click on Create Component. I'll confirm, and there it is. Our cookie consent component has been added to the Webflow Canvas. Let's publish our project to check that it's working. On page load, the banner is being displayed. And when I click on OK, got it, the banner closes. If I reload the page, the banner will not show. Now let's clear cookies so we can see that banner again. I'm in Chrome and I'll click on the site information icon, then cookie consent and site data, then manage on device site data, and then click on the trash can to delete the cookie. Now let's reload the page and there it is again, it's working. Cookies cleared, I see the consent component again. This structure is completely native to Webflow. It's here in Navigator, we have the structure of our component and I'll open the FS consent component element to see our banner structure inside. The elements generated in FinSuite components contain attributes. We can see them in the element settings panel and these attributes are required for the solution to work so don't remove them. You can style each element however you want. You have full control of the Webflow Styles panel. I'll increase the padding, change the position, and use my brand colors. You can add any other style to customize your cookie consent component. You can also change class names and rearrange the order of elements inside the banner. Just don't remove any attributes or delete elements that contain attributes. When we add a component to your website, we also add a code block. Let's go to Site Settings, Custom Code, and we can see it right here. This is required for your component to work properly. So do not delete this code block if you want cookie consent to work. Let's go back to Webflow Designer and take this tutorial to the next level. We're going to build a fully GDPR cookie consent component. We'll look at more configuration options and more steps related to GDPR. First, I'll remove the simple banner from the page. I'll click Apps, FinSuite Components, and select Cookie Consent. Now let's change the setup from simple to full. That change gives us a lot more configuration options and a new tab called scripts. We also have green icons to indicate something important for GDPR requirements. Let's start with mode. I'll leave opt-in selected, which means the user must specifically accept the use of cookies before the cookies are loaded on the website. Down to the category section, we have our consent categories that users can access in the preferences panel. The default categories are essential, marketing, personalization, and analytics. Using the tooltips, 
we can see examples of scripts that fall in each category. You can also hide categories if you want. Optionally use a custom toggle button built with Webflow interactions instead of a checkbox. I don't recommend this option if your page uses Webflow interactions with an initial state set. In order to use a custom toggle button, we must reset Webflow interactions, which can cause unexpected behavior. Use disable scrolling when you want to lock page scrolling when the preferences UI is open. I'll leave this unchecked and continue to store consents. Storing consents is required by some countries for full GDPR compliance. You can store consents in your own database, but we do not cover that in this video. We have a five minute video showing you exactly how to do it in our guide. So let's continue and we're ready to generate our component. Click on create component and confirm. The full setup generates three elements here. We have the banner, preferences, and open preferences. The banner has a preferences link, reject button, and accept button. The preferences panel can be seen by changing display to flex. And we can see our three categories here with checkboxes. A user on your website can consent to cookies by category, reject all, accept all, or save preferences. A user can open the Preferences panel by clicking this button, and this button is dynamic. When the Preferences UI is closed, it will show. When the Preferences UI is open, it will hide. This element is not required, but if you remove it, make sure you add a Preferences link in the footer of the page so users can access the Preferences panel to update their consent settings. Let's go back into FinSuite Components, we're all good with the configure tab. Now let's go to the script tag to complete the setup. In this step, we need to connect all of our cookie issuing scripts to FinSuite components. So if you have Google Analytics on your website, FinSuite cookie consent needs to be able to turn on and turn off that script based on the user's consent settings. Each script in your project that issues a cookie must be updated. We'll go over this process from start to finish. FinSuite Cookie Consent scans your entire Webflow project and lists all the scripts found throughout the project. It's up to you to decide if a script is essential, personalization, analytics, marketing, or if it doesn't issue cookies at all. In that case, I can dismiss it. In this tutorial project, we have three scripts, Facebook Pixel, Uncategorized, and Google Analytics. We can see these three scripts in Site Settings Custom Code, Facebook, Zendesk, and Google Analytics. Make sure you don't have scripts in the Integrations tab. If you have these integration setups, please remove them and add the full scripts in the Custom Code. We will replace each one of these scripts with an updated version of that script inside FinSuite Components. So let's click on the Facebook Pixel script. I'll check Marketing, and then click on the updated code snippet to copy it to the clipboard. Let's go back to Site Settings, Custom Code, and delete the Facebook Pixel script, then paste the new script from FinSuite Components. Adding these attributes allows us to manage when the script fires. When a user consents to marketing scripts, this Facebook Pixel script will be loaded on the page. So here in the Preferences UI, when a user selects marketing, we'll fire the Facebook Pixel script. Let's save and then publish our project. After the publish is complete, click Scan Project. And there we go, the Facebook Pixel script is complete. Let's do the next one. Sometimes FinSuite components will show uncategorized as the name of the script. That's because we're not sure what it is. Here in the code snippet, I can see it's Zendesk and we'll choose categories based on that. So I'll choose personalization, copy the updated code snippet, go to site settings custom code, I'll remove this Zendesk snippet and then paste the new snippet right here. Okay, let's do the same thing for Google Analytics. 
I'll check analytics, copy the updated script, delete the original script, and then paste the updated script right here in site settings. Okay, back into the app, there's one last item on our list, and that's to remove the no script tags. These are not GDPR compliant, and we must remove them from the project. I'll go into site settings and delete the no script Facebook pixel snippet. Let's save and publish that project. After that's complete, we can go back to designer and check our setup. I'll rescan the project and we're good. Everything is green. Our setup is complete. Nice job. Each of these scripts will load only after the user consents to cookies, either allowing all or allowing by specific category. A special note about Google Tag Manager. We fully support GTM inside FinSuite Cookie Consent. There's an extra step required for Google Tag Manager implementations, and we won't cover them in this video. We've created a dedicated video explaining the Google Tag Manager setup. Check out the documentation for frequently asked questions and get free human support on FinSuite Forum. You can access all the resources here in the Need Help dropdown and more in the description of this video. FinSuite Components is always free with your Webflow.io staging domain. We'll never charge you to test and build your components. When you're ready to go live, get a subscription to publish to production. You are one step closer to building next level components inside your Webflow project. You can download FinSuite components in the Webflow Apps Marketplace, and those links are in the description below. Go to finsuite.com components to learn how we can help you succeed with Webflow. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you want to learn more about how to build awesome websites in Webflow.